if you saw my uh, first part of the interview with Alf, I said a ton of stuff there about how good this guy is. Guys like Dougley Do Wrong who have me on a channel. It's, it's huge for me. Uh, it's huge with Alf. He really, for a long time, has participated in the comments section, comes on the lives, drops in, even throws me a bone of information here and there. He's been wonderful. Uh, so the defensive part wasn't, I thought he was going to get cut, but he went on for a full hour. And this guy really loves the game. He loves to talk the game. And so I hope you'll enjoy this part. I hope you watch the first part. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this second part on the defense. I left a little bit out that I want to talk to, but at an hour, it was like, all right, man, I, I don't want to out, out, outstay my welcome here. And he, he didn't even say, let's get out of here, but I felt the need. So we didn't get on to certain parts uh, of the edge players, but we covered the D interior. We, we covered the safeties, the cornerbacks, and a whole lot of other stuff. So I hope you enjoy this because I did. Uh, so, without much further ado, check out Al talking his thing and me throwing my little two cents in long Better way. support for Brewer because of his size. He doesn't get bull rushed. He is a powerful guy. If you got to double with him, you're not going to have to give as much help. Where Eichenberg, he kind of lacks that. So, I'm, I'm very excited. I hope it plays out right. And I think that right guard pick is going to be big for us. So, let's get into the defense. Alf, uh, I got some stuff. Uh, all right, we know uh, Holland, Poyer, May, and maybe Campbell. What's going on with Cam Smith? I mean, I know uh, he's Cam injured, but are we getting into that point where there is a little bit of concern? You had last year, there was injuries, and you said, like, well, maybe Fangio didn't like him, whatever. But now we're back again, some more injuries. He's not. He's going to be here sometime in August. Uh, uh, are we getting a little concerned? Yeah, I'm a bit concerned, and I'll tell you why. Uh, although I will say this. He was spotted on the field yesterday working, and I was explaining to somebody, if I was doing that exercise, I'd blow out both my ACLs. Because he, <laughs> he had a 25-pound kettlebell, and he was doing those those mini box jumps yeah, yeah. On, on each leg. And, you know, that's that's harder than practice, yeah. <laughs> isn't it? You know? So he was doing that. He had a sleeve on his left leg. So that suggests that he probably just tweaked something and he asked out for whatever reason. Uh, I will say this. Look, I've uh, and I've heard this from coaches before, and, and, and I don't want to be the guy that that actually, you know, says this you know, no, no. in any derogatory way. But no, don't get good injured. Kid. Don't get injured. Don't leave the field. OK, if availability is good. Yeah, you're either injured or if, if it's a tweak and you think you can go through it, you don't have to leave the field. You don't have to lose snaps. And, you know, he's he's not hurting. He's not, he's not helping himself here. He's not helping himself here because he's allowing other snaps to go to other guys that are going to emerge. Uh, Dude, in his, I mean, and they can't really cut athlete. him. They can't cut him a second-round pick. No, there's too much talent there. They saw what he did in the preseason last year. He competes with the likes yeah. of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Uh, I've seen enough. This guy is a guy who's capable, but you're not capable if you don't play. You can't play good if you never play. Nope, that that's – I mean, you've got – the toughness at – everybody's hurt. And when you were playing in the NFL, I mean, everybody's hurt. It's you got to decide, you know, is this injury or is this pain, you know? And that, that's – is do you think that he's just not tough enough or you think his body's not tough enough? You think it's both? There's a lot of injuries for a young guy, and which you know you kind of maybe year one you're like okay he doesn't know how to prepare his body, but now we're in year two, and it's only one, but it's yeah, and you you understand you know what they're trying to accomplish, what Anthony Weaver's trying to accomplish, like you know Kendall Fuller had a day off today, and they're going to be light with these guys, yeah. and I will say this, all, a lot of kudos to Jalen Ramsey, that guy was going. That guy was asking know. for every rep there was. Yeah, he's all he, out, man. He was he was running all over the field. He was he was coming it's up amazing. on the court. You know that that guy was was he was playing as if that he was practicing as, as if this was the Super Bowl. Okay, that's and leadership. You see the intensity. That's you leadership. See the intensity. All right. So he wasn't asking out. He wasn't asking out for any any other reps. Uh, he was trying to pick up every rep that he could. Uh, Kendall Fuller. They're, they're trying to you know. They're trying to save yeah. save his legs for the for when the time is right. Yeah, you know, which is fine. He's he's a vet. If, so if you're Cam Smith and you're asking out, you're now stressing their plans on 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 defense, 
And now Kendall Fuller has to play more snaps than they actually want him. I to heard play. there was some character issues, some red flags with him in college. Yeah, that that was that was uh, yeah, those were the red flags on him. Is that you know he was a difficult guy, you know? What a shame, you know. But we shall see. You know, he yeah. should come back soon. If you can do if you can do those exercises, he should be ready to practice pretty soon. When he comes back, it's going to be one of those things where he's going to have to have. Somebody's going to have to talk to him. And if it can't be a coach, it has to be somebody like Jalen Ramsey to tell him, look, man, in this sport, you know, you're out of sight, out of mind, man. <laughs> you know? That's it. You're not it's around. Nothing, nothing's guaranteed, man. Nothing, yeah, nothing. If you're not around, coaches forget you exist. It's as simple as that. Well, stay positive, though, and talk about the new future combo of Boner and Storm Duck. It's Bonner. Yeah. It's Bonner, right? It's Bonner? Yeah, Ethan Bonner. Either Bonner. Yeah, at this, point, at this point. the other day. Look, my partner Chris Kaufman. My partner Chris Kaufman had a great tweet. I, I'm pretty sure you read it, where he said, "You know, we keep talking about Cam Smith, but at some point, you know, we got to start talking about Ethan Bonner because all the players do." Yeah, and it's and it's true. If you listen to all these guys, they keep mentioning him. They don't mention yeah. Cam Smith. Yeah, they keep mentioning Ethan Bonner, and that's a great look, point. I didn't see that tweet though. Yeah, it, at some, some point we got to start listening to the players. The guy that they keep mentioning is Ethan Bonner. Okay, and even if like if you're Chris Greer and like okay, you're like oh Chris Greer missed out on Cam Smith in the second round. If, if Bonner uh, does his thing, he cancels it. Doesn't matter. Cancels just about getting enough good guys on the team. And so yeah. if you can hit with these UDFA's and back end dudes, even if you miss a little bit on the front. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that because I'm a homer for the, for Greer. You know that. But if you can get Bonner to play what Cam's supposed to do, and Cam doesn't pan out then it's it's good but you know imagine now if cam does pan out and then you got bonner and storm duck it, are we am i supposed to really be psyched for storm duck i love that name i'm praying he's making like plays. for him he's making plays i kind of like the, i like these udfas okay uh, i like i said Johnson. i like i like his physicality it's a 63 mm-hmm. 205 Cold. pound guy and he has these long arms very jalen ramsey like not in play yep. you know so yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. don't get too excited but, you know, his body type, his, his length, his physicality. But think about it. I mean, think about it. Greer and Co. staff, they've got Kohu, Needham, maybe Bonner, and now maybe Storm Duck. I mean, so they got every, – every staff and scouting staff has strengths and weaknesses. They just – you know, running back I think is one of our strengths. But you're seeing some really good stuff with what we're finding after the fact, post-facto of the draft – in this uh, defensive back group. So it, it gives you some hope that bon, Boner, Bonner and Storm Duck can make it, you know? So, yeah. And the thing about Ethan Bonner, and, and I've said this to, to plenty, look, uh, you could play a regular season games and ma- a regular season game. And maybe they, you know, they run a route combination. He's not used to, they scheme him out of position and then they get him for a big play. But yeah. one thing you can't teach is what yeah. I've seen with my own eyes. I've seen Jalen Waddle run a fly route. And the ball he's goes up. It's a good pass. And he's one-on-one with Ethan Bonner. Ethan Bonner is one-on-one with Jalen Waddle. And he elevates to knock the pass away. And when he elevates to knock the pass away, he's right on Jalen Waddle's hip. And That's amazing. That's And the other day, and the other day there was a play that got the entire media ooing and aahing because yeah, we, thought, yeah. we thought he intercepted the pass when he went up. But it turns out he deflected it. And Tyreek Hill caught it for a big gain on him. <laughs> oh, but what know. mattered was where were the two players in relation to the ball? Yeah. They were side by side. Wow. So, I heard that. I heard he's been so, he's been trailing really, really well. Yeah, you can't teach stuff like wow. that. So yeah, so you know, I understand one fan somewhere will, will probably he'll probably get beat week two or something by somebody. Everybody say, oh, Ramsey's got beat would... a couple of times already this this uh camp already. But well, like when his... you're taking as many snaps as he's taking oh, yeah. against Tyreek yeah. Hill and Jalen Waddle, they're gonna beat you. <laughs> okay. So, you know, but again on Ethan Bonner, man, I have you know, you can't help but be optimistic when you see the, the physical traits that he shows every single and Storm day. Duck. And Storm Duck. <laughs> yeah, you know, the only thing, you know, the only knock you could put on Storm Duck is he's not doing it against Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Yeah. But he's but a guy he you could it. definitely probably stash on the practice squad. Yeah, he, and he could play special teams. That's you awesome. Know? All right, all right, yeah, I, all right, so I don't want – I'm no homer. I really – you told me Kohu was not making it. You said he was the odd man out. 
Has the Cam injury and his play or altered that trajectory? How do you feel like that evaluations and the staff? Because you said it wasn't just you. You said the staff was kind of making it well known that Kohu kind of – to me, even if Kohu gets traded and he plays well now, it's he's a trade asset. But do you think that somehow he's getting to the point where he's going to stick? I, I think he's elevated himself, although he did not have a great day today. Uh, I think he ve- he's elevated himself in the eyes of the staff because he's available and he's yeah he's going to do his job and he's yeah so get beat by Waddle well. Waddle yeah. toasted him yeah but Jalen Waddle tends to do that to everybody you know yeah yeah he beat There's Ramsey for, he he beat Ramsey for the game winning touchdown today in their in their simulated game so no I got yeah. to me I see him more as a press zone cover corner because you know his mid to late clock. Uh, uh, speeds is just not really that. He usually gets beat man mid to late clock. Um, but I heard that we were running lots of zones, but now I'm hearing man. W- w- what's the deal? I heard some players say well, they could run in lots of zone coverage. And I think he'd be perfect for that. Yeah, they're, they're you know, it's, it's I know a it's mix. mixed match too, you know. Yeah, they're, they're mixing and matching the, the coverages. Uh, you know, they do they do blitz off of zone coverage a lot. So that's something that I love I him. He's is, so thick. He can get up in a guy, jam him, fight off that run, uh, run block. And he's a pretty sure tackle. I like Kohu. Yeah, and he's strong, he's strong and physical. Oh, and and one thing you can say about Kerry Kohu, who uh, you know, he's also been a part of the biggest highlight of camp so far, you know, where I don't know if you're aware of this, but he got into it with Jalen Wright. Yeah, and he got thrown, he got suplexed by Paul. <laughs> yeah, and, and Paul. <laughs> You know, picks him up and throws him, and That's you know crazy. that guy's a which giant. is good. He's he's coming. You know, Patrick Paul's coming to the aid of his of his offensive, yeah, it's you know, so off, offensive teammate. But I thought Jordan Brooks had the best quote on all that. He What's says, that? "Every time there's a fight, you just got to make sure that you run over like you're going to do something, but then you end up doing nothing." <laughs> all right, I'm going to get to your man next. Now, one last bit: need him making it or not? I heard he started to do good, but it's kind of trailed off a little bit. But you think he's making it? Well, his contract suggests that he's making it because, okay. and I'll tell you why. Uh, you could count on him for special teams. He's a core special teamer if they need it. If Saran Neal, you know, gets injured or if they decide to cut him, possibly, then Nick Needham's a core special teamer just like that. He's a guy who's performed well before. Uh, we spoke to him two days ago, and he was talking about the the offensive. I mean, the defensive system, and he was pretty gun ho about it. He was That's like, there's awesome. a lot of there's a lot of coverages where you get to peek into the back in the backfield and you get to play facing the quarterback. And that's that's where I think I'm at my best. And that's him talking. That's right? awesome. So, it's huge for your it's huge for your roster, especially the cap, when you got a guy like Kohu and need him on your defensive back group and they're undrafted free agents. That's a huge if you can keep and Storm Duck. Storm Duck's making it, baby. Yeah. Well, Storm Duck, you know, he's a player. I'm just, I'm just playing, but I just want that. I want, I don't want Storm Duck to be on anybody else's roster but the Dolphins. I love that name. I can't yeah. stop thinking. About it. It's so great. Yeah, well, I, th- I believe that they kept. What, what did they keep? They kept thirteen uh, defensive backs last year, right? I can't remember. Maybe I think maybe. it was thirteen. I think that number is about right. If you if you start rattling them off. You end up keeping every sexy name, and maybe you could stash somebody like. There ain't no Storm sexier Duck. name than Storm Duck, baby. I want to name my child Storm Duck. I'm going to change it. Uh, so, okay, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, Tyndall and Brooks. You were big on Brooks. I was kind of like, ah, all right, I see things. There's some concerns I have. Uh, I think he ran uh, two gap with Seattle. Now he's going to go into one gap mostly. I want to see how he fights off those blocks, and then his ability because he's so huge to get that second cut. But other than that, Alf, you have nailed it. This guy pops all the time. He has all the checks for leadership. And every single practice, I hear, oh, Alf's right. I'm hearing this guy pop. So you, you're you still high as heck on him, aren't you? Yeah, and today he had two very noticeable plays. There was a play where they, they went empty, and uh, Jordan Brooks flexes out, and he's covering Devon Achan on the boundary. Okay? And you look at the coverage and you're like, okay, he might have safety help here, but no matter what, he still has Devon Achan on the boundary. And Tua goes back to pass and tries to look off the intermediate route and looks over to Achan. And we were talking about it as a whole group. We were talking about it and we're like, Jordan Brooks kind of had him there for those first 15 yards. 
So I he heard the other day he chased him on like a po uh, a, a post out, and he like had him step for step. Yeah, so so he actually took away the first look to HN. You know, maybe that's, if, that's if, insane. If Tua, if Tua holds the ball a little longer, and that's yeah. not something they like to do, yeah, he he might get him, but he got him for that initial first. That's look. amazing. That's and then that's there was insane. another play where he diagnosed the play perfectly, and it was on one of those simulated drives where Tua called a smoke screen to, to Tyreek Hill, and Jordan Brooks just made a beeline from his scrape position, which is right off of the tackle, right out into the passing lane to knock the pass away. Wow. Like you could tell that he diagnosed the play. He tried to intercept that thing. He just if, we get, get if, if we get a three-tool linebacker at 250, that's going to change a lot of stuff. We haven't seen that. It's always been like specialty guys, you know? And if, you, if he's a three-tool guy, you never have to worry about uh, – uh, you know, high speed offenses, people keeping your, your linebacker on the field like we did with some of our guys, it would be so huge. Now, on a converse, is Tindall making it or is he uh, on his way out? I heard some plays. Yeah, uh, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, not today, Two sacks or something. But yesterday, he had two sacks and a, and a, and a, and a run stop. Um, but I ended up giving, you know, the player of the practice to Chop Robinson for his second player of the practice in six games, six practices. But uh, I didn't give it to Channing Tindall for, for one simple reason. I thought he was schemed to get to the quarterback twice, and that's why he got those two sacks. Yeah. But but he's a younger guy. He's fast. And, he's fast. Yeah, and, you know, the physical part of the game is not going to be his problem. His, his problem is going to be diagnosing and thinking the game and actually yeah. being in the right place at the right time. That was his problem. That was his knock in college. Yeah, so the games are going to be important for him. Those joint practices are going to be important for him. And, you know, I think it's tight for him because on the pro side, if you keep him, you might be able to cut Duke Riley and save about $3 million. On the flip side, Duke Riley is a guy that you can like count Duke. on special teams. Yeah, and, and even just filling in short term. Yeah, and when you have Duke Riley as your fourth linebacker, which is what he is right now, you have a deep group. Yeah. You know? I mean, because so, you, you one guy goes down, and then Tyndall's there, and he's got, like, mental yips. That can, I mean, you look at what Riley even did, who's a vet and everything. He got toasted last yeah, year. Yeah, it's just goes, the numbers. Yeah. It's just the numbers at that at that position group. It's just the numbers because you have you have your four, right? If you count Duke Riley, then th that's your four. Is five Cam Brown or is it or is it Channing Tindall? You know, Cam Brown could do this, but he's a special team, so he could fill a special team role. Yeah, that's the thing about Cam Brown is that Cam Brown is a guy that you're not going to cut because you brought him in to be a core yeah. special teamer and. They need that I, at this time. You're not you're not going to do this again to Danny Crossman because part of the reason why I think they brought back Danny Cross Danny Crossman is because they keep poaching all his guys in <laughs> season, and then you're going to blame him when his special yeah. teams, you yeah. know, fails in a game, right? So you know, this time he has his core guys. Are they really going to keep six interior linebackers? I don't know. Not with you all know? the edge plays, you can't. Because a lot of our edge players can fill some of that linebacker duties, you know. It's like you're really just – you're not dealing – you got really the two inside linebackers is what you're dealing with. I mean, Phil two back soon, Chubb, you got Kamara, Chop. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of guys, Grayson, Murphy. You know, I wanted to get to all – I don't want to get too much into the edges because uh, we're going on a while, but because I, I really want to ask you about the interior quick. Kamara, I heard he's getting better. You like the direction? Yeah, absolutely. His only problem is that he plays on the same team as Chop Robinson. That's it. Because <laughs> if he was any other rookie any other year, we'd be saying, you know, this guy could contribute this year. You know, he's showing some chops. You know, what he chops. shows <laughs> – Yeah, what he's showing against the run is what Chop Robinson is showing against the pass. And I was explaining this uh, the other day because they're like, ah, oh, he's kind of raw. Because uh, I was watching a, a national show that was talking about the Dolphins are going to be relying on a raw rookie to produce right away. And I'm like, if you're going to rely on a raw, quote unquote, raw rookie, this is the kind of raw rookie you want to rely on. A guy who's just going to run past your, your tackle because your tackle can't see him. You know, that's a translatable skill in any oh, yeah. level oh, of yeah. football. I mean, okay? he definitely has some. You see, it's weird because I appreciate that because I heard a lot that uh, Chop and Kamara weren't setting the edge well. They were struggling in run defense. I heard from like a couple of Kamara better. Uh, Kamara's been better in that regard. I could say that, you know, chop uh, chops problem. Although at, a couple of times he's ran himself into the play, uh, you know, on a toss play. So 
you know, his problem is that he tends to overrun it. He gets to, you know, he gets upfield way too fast. He's like one of those young dogs, those young puppies, just so full of energy. He's just he hasn't settled in yet, you know. He because he didn't play that much in college too. He was kind of reduced in some of his role, and so he's still getting experience. But the talent's obviously yeah, and there, and and it's, roof. and it's obvious too. There's a there's a video going around, and you know we can't take that video, but the fans can, you know, which is kind of unfair. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, uh, fans put a, a a video of they're running goal line, and Anthony Weaver sends a blitz. So Dolphins correctly on the offensive line identify, look, we're going to leave the farthest man out unblocked, which is Chop Robinson. And, we're gonna and I saw that. He got the pressure on Tua. Yeah, we're going to block down because the pass is coming to this side. We're flooding this side anyway. So, you know, Tua has that man. So Tua is the one who's blocking or not blocking Chop Robinson, but he's he's in charge of Chop Robinson, meaning he has to get the ball off quick enough. And you can just see it. He gets off so fast. You can see oh, yeah. Tua was almost surprised by it. Like, whoa, I didn't. Th- I thought I had a little bit more time than that. I saw the tight end. I thought the tight end should have done a little bit better chip. Yes, he should have gotten at least a handout. You yeah, know? it was like so token. I don't understand. Oh, I wish I could talk to you forever, man. I don't understand why are these tight ends, they don't block and there's so much token effort. I, I don't understand. Like even on the defensive side too, a lot of times I'll see defenders – the guy will be in a route and they just put the hand out there. When all you do is just stab the guy, you're in zone, just stab him, you know, give the, that shot and get him off. And it, it's, it, all you have to do is get him rocking and then he has to restart. It buys you that quarter second. You know, I don't know. I don't know why you don't see more jamming from the defenders and more just effort by tight ends. They just, I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, weird. or widen or widen your release off the line. Uh, but I think in that play, I think it was Tanner Connor actually that was on that. Connor, side, Tanner, right? Tanner Connor. <laughs> yeah, he was just trying <laughs> to release. He was just trying to release and try to be quick. Uh, don't. You can't. Release, I don't release understand. Release a that. little like to, wider. If you release I, a little wider, you delay his rush. I don't know? get it. Sometimes, like even like I go watch running backs. Like I'm no. I, look, these guys are pros. I mean, I can't carry that jock strap. But how do you not even take a handoff? In proper technique, a lot of these only running backs are like like a loaf of bread. I don't get like these little basic things, you know. It's so bizarre sometimes. Again, I'm just I'm a nobody, but those little things. I mean, you're going out in the route, and that's the last guy, and that's the guy who's a speed burner. Just take that extra step, jam, get inside leverage, force him to go around you, hold them for a quarter second, and then he ain't getting in. It's the restart. There was no restart. I don't know. Whatever. All right, I'm getting too much into it. I'm getting too much. Okay, so. Last bit. Last year, I like Peely. You weren't too high on him. I thought he was going to make it this year. I really like uh, what he brings his size, but I don't hear anything about him, and I can't see anything. So I'm thinking I'm going to lose the bet this year. Uh, so I'm hoping that you can make me feel better about myself so I'm crying to my hanky. Uh, how's my man Peely doing? Games are gonna. Uh, these games are going to be really, really important for him because they're really only playing two guys as, as nose guards. And, and Hand, Hand's Jones. another guy, right? Hand's playing in there? Uh, Hand, uh, Hand's been really, really good. Uh, they tend to play yeah. a lot of guys over the center, okay? That's something that they do a lot. But true nose guards, they got two. It's Benito Jones and Brandon Peely. You know, those are the two guys. They say Benito's doing good with his limited shots, but I don't know, Yeah, man. and I got a good look at him today. That dude's dense. He looks like – you know what he looks like? He looks like an oversized fire hydrant, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he's what six i think he's like six two three thirty five or something yeah pierce is six four three fifty which is insane and he's no and one thing i liked about the body types of all these guys these are not fat bodies okay these are not fat guys okay they're dense they're thick dudes especially especially benito jones he did some work on his body because i remember him when he first was here and he looked completely different than what he looks like now he said that when he went to detroit it was eye-opening you know, what the, what they told him about, you know, his play and how he could stay on in the NFL. And he really went out. Difference. Yeah, he, and he went out and he really worked on. on yeah, he wasn't, that, he wasn't that good last year. He's, he's, kind of, yeah. he's kind of always seemed bigger than he plays, you know. So if he can get that together, that would be huge for us. Yeah, the pleasant surprise really inside is Tier Tart, okay. I think he's you making know. it, huh? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He he's 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 come on. Remember, he had the, the bad reputation. Oh, he takes plays off. You know. Yeah. Uh, he's a guy who's not always in the gr- the best condition. Man, he's he he's in great shape, taking a lot of snaps, playing showing with a, playing with a lot of effort. 
uh, Neville Gallimore is making the team because I, I think I explained yeah. to you how how he came on to this team. And one thing you like about Neville Gallimore right away, he may not always make the play, but you can't question his effort. No, no, like, and he's a vet, and they got some solid money tied to him. Yeah, well, they essentially handed him the minimum, but they handed it to him in hundred and crisp one hundred dollar bills. Because if you look at his, <laughs> if you look at his, uh, his, he's essentially making no salary this year. They handed him one point two million dollars to play this year, guaranteed. Wow. So, so he's playing yeah, he's for the one point two million dollars. He's making, yeah. Because if you cut him, Stephen Ross is going to place a phone call. Like you know, you made me give this give this guy yep. one point two million dollars, and now he's not here anymore. Yep. You know. So, so who do you think's interfering with Peely making it? I think it's who? those guys. It's, I think it's the the versatility. Tart and yeah, it's the versatility that they're showing with all of these guys inside. Although Gallimer won't play inside, he's a guy that sometimes they'll shift him on, onto the nose. You know, I've even seen Calais Campbell over the center. So they move guys around, especially on, on, on passing downs. So. so so this is my thing. Okay, so the beauty of a complete team is that everybody gets challenged in practice. And so when you're looking at, say, a, a team that's got a good D-line versus a good offensive line, you're getting equal challenged. I'm, I'm not saying I'm right, but I kind of feel a little bit that this offensive line, especially without Win and Tehran, is a little soft, and it might be creating some ghosts for our front. Uh, do you think that I'm being unfair? I think that no, I, I think that that's pretty accurate. Uh, I would say once you get past the it's the same thing as last year. Once you get the pa- past the first unit, you know it's going to get weaker. You know behind a lot, Jones. I think. Yeah. So you know, and and Driscoll, who's who's not playing on the first unit, but you know he's playing out of position. For essentially, yeah. you know, because he hasn't snapped the ball in, I believe, five years in the NFL. Now he's being cross trained there. So I think that's going to give you like an unfair evaluation, especially with what is going on inside, mm-hmm. you know. And you got to remember, Tua's is mitigating most of this stuff. And look how much a difference he made from being there and not being there. And the system is mitigating the rest. So, yeah, yep. you know, so, so it's, it's hard to get an evaluation there. All right, brother. So I appreciate all your time. Guys, Al from Two Yards for Carry. I'm going to let him do the, sh- the spiel uh, because he's much smoother than me. I got monkey mouth. So, Al, tell us how we can support you, how we can find you, and the whole nine. If you want to listen to our podcast, we're Three Yards Per Carry. That's the number three yards per carry. You can find our podcast anywhere you get your podcast. We're pretty much everywhere. Apple, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast. The Twitter account, you can see it right there. It's at three yards per carry. And if you want to become a member of our Discord, it's discord.gg forward slash only fins, and you become a member there for three dollars a month. We have over I'm joining 2, up soon. like-minded friends. Yes. We have over two thousand like-minded fans. We have, you know, we do film study. We, you know, you got our famous three YPC channel where myself chris kaufman and simon clancy are there all day answering questions awesome. you want to talk to us personally you can all you got to do is just talk to us and that's awesome we talk to you right back three bucks we have a vetted room and you'll see when you get in there what the vetted room is all about but for three dollars a month discord.gg forward slash only fence yeah i i really guys i mean if anybody who's been watching me for a while you know i got a big mouth i kind of get myself in trouble i, I only know one way to say say what i think and I do, uh, Alf, uh, you know, when I first met you, I was like, man, who is this guy? I didn't even know who you are. And then, like, I seen you on, like, the Twitter thing. I'm like, man, this guy's mean. You're the nicest guy. You're hard work. You present great information, and you should support him. Uh, I really put you in the higher canon, the top canon of all certain group that I really put faith in. So I appreciate everything you've been doing, brother. I appreciate you for supporting me and showing up here and giving my uh, viewers some great, great stuff. It's always a pleasure and it's always a privilege. Uh, Guys, I thank you for everything. Curtis out. Alf, thank you again. Thank you. All right, that wraps it up. Alf, uh, if you've been here for the full hour, then you got to learn a lot. Uh, You should definitely check him out. Uh, he's got the Discord channel, uh, OnlyFins, three bucks a month. I'm trying to get on. I got to figure the Discord thing out. It's a tech thing. Uh, I listen to him a ton on his channel, Three Yards Per Carry. Obviously, yeah, his Twitter thing. I get a lot of stuff from him there, too. Al's a great source of information. There's so many good guys, you know, and I think everybody really provides something. Some. 
maybe more of a certain flavor that you can use. I listen to everybody. Some people don't like Travis Wingfield. Some people don't like TD Finn's talk. I like them both. I listen to all of them. But for me, certain guys, uh, they have a little thing that's more to what I am particularly looking for. Uh, I really don't uh, opinion stuff and and rah-rah stuff. Is I enjoy it on game day, uh, but I'm more of like an old-style journalism. And for me, Alf, among a few others, there's a few others out there. It's not just Alf. Uh, I don't go through the list because I might leave somebody out, but there's a lot of guys out there that I think they're in the vein of true journalism. So and that's what I try to do. I'm still learning the game. I've been doing this thing for three years and writing for Finn's News for five or six. But uh, guys like Kyle Krabs, uh, uh, even Dudley Durong, who's uh, he's not a, 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 a football journalist per se, but he's got good integrity and he's a real nice guy and he knows the game and he does a pretty good job. You know, he's kind of like me learning the gig. But Kyle Krabs, they're pros. Alf is pros. I, I love Omar. Uh, there's a lot of good guys. I don't want to get into it, but it was a pleasure to have him on. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, and there's a lot to get from him. I can't wait to talk to him again. So anyway, uh, be well, go Finns, Curtis out. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.